We interrupt this video for a special shout out to you, the viewers, for making the last low budget review the most viewed video in the history of low budget reviews. But what was interesting about this video was that in the past, the number of views corresponded somewhat to the popularity of the movie. Thus, The Born Identity, which did well at the box office, would get a lot of views. Clerks 3, on the other hand, not so much. But here, this was interesting because uh, Walk Hard, the Dewey Cox story, was essentially a box office bomb. It, it did not do well at the box office. It, it actually lost money because it had a, a budget of $35 million and only grossed like $20 million. Um, and yet, uh, the video was the most popular video in the or most viewed video in the history of low budget reviews so i thank you for that and on with the video On April 17, 1968, Adam McKay was born in Denver, Colorado, the son of a musician father and a waitress. He was raised in Worcester, Massachusetts and Malvern, Pennsylvania. When McKay was seven, his parents divorced. He graduated from Great Valley High School in Malvern in 1986. He then attended Pennsylvania State University for a year before trans transferring to Temple University, where he majored in English. McKay dropped out of school a semester and a half before he was set to earn a bachelor's degree. He moved to Chicago, where he became one of the founding members of the Upright Citizens Brigade Improv Comedy Group, and he joined Chicago's Improv Olympic. He also joined the family as well as Child's Play Touring Theater. McKay originally auditioned for Saturday Night Live to be an on-screen performer, but did not make the cut. However, the scripts he submitted earned him a job as a writer from 1995, and within a year, McKay became head writer at age 27, a position he held until 2001. He also directed a number of short films for the show, including the original SNL digital shorts. McKay encouraged his Second City friend Tina Fey to submit some of her scripts to Saturday Night Live, and she later succeeded him as head writer. Shortly after leaving SNL, McKay teamed up with comedian Will Ferrell to form a production company, Gary Sanchez Productions. Under the umbrella of this production company, he wrote and directed the comedy film Anchorman, The Legend of Ron Burgundy, released in 2004, and Talladega Nights, The Ballad of Ricky Bobby, released in 2006. I think it's ingrained in all Americans to take risks. Oh, no! Ooh, if your name is not Ricky Bobby, he's got two first names. Does that blow your mind? Then you're not him. I'm a fire! You're not on fire, Ricky Bobby! Help me, Oprah Winifred! Will Ferrell. Ricky Bobby is not a thinker. I'm a driver. I am so paralyzed! I could never learn to play guitar. You don't need your legs to play guitar. Don't tell me lies! Talladega Nights, The Battle of Ricky Bobby, oh. rated PG-13. Opens yeah. everywhere Friday. <laughs> The movie opens in rural North Carolina, where Ricky Bobby is born in the backseat of a speeding car when his father, Reese, played by Gary Cole, misses the turnoff for the hospital. Next, we see Ricky Bobby at age five, uh, is played by Jake Johnson, who says, I want to go fast, and misappropriates his mother's car while she is buying milk. His mother, by the way, is played by Jane Lynch. The movie next shows career day at Ricky Bobby's school when Ricky is 10. Uh, Ricky is played by Luke Bingham. Reese eventually shows up, and although he gets kicked out by school security, he tells Ricky, if you ain't first, you're last, advice which Ricky takes to heart. Fifteen years later, Ricky, who's played by Will Ferrell, works on the pit crew of Dennett Racing driver Terry Chaveau, who's played by director Adam McKay. When last place Chaveau decides to take a bathroom break, Ricky replaces him and finishes third. Larry Dennett Sr. gives Ricky a permanent seat, and he quickly rises to be one of NASCAR's most successful drivers, with Lucas Washington, played by the late Michael Clark Duncan, as his crew chief. He persuades Dennett to field a second team for his best friend, Cal Naughton Jr., played by John C. Riley, 
and they become an unstoppable duo using their shake and bake slingshot technique on the track, in which Cal will lead for most of the race, and then Cal will allow Ricky Bobby to overtake him. He meets his future wife Carly, played by Leslie Bibb, when she flashes her breasts after one of his wins. Ricky Bobby's newfound arrogance, however, aggravates Dennis' son, who retaliates by adding openly gay French Formula One driver Jean Girard, played by Sasha Baron Cohen, to the team. Uh, he meets Girard on a, at a bar, and they have an altercation in which he breaks Ricky Bobby's arm. In spite of this injury, he wants to beat Girard and races him. Ricky crashes at Lowe's Motor Speedway and is hospitalized. He thinks he's, he is paralyzed from the waist down, but in fact he is not paralyzed, and only by stabbing himself in his leg is he convinced. Uh, fearful of wrecking again, his performance drastically declines, and Dennett fires him. Carly, realizing Ricky's career as a driver is over, leaves him for Cal. Although Cal still considers Ricky his best friend, Ricky insists their friendship is over. Ricky and his sons, Walker and Texas Ranger, move in with Ricky's mother, Lucy. While Ricky takes a job as a pizza delivery man, Lucy tries to reform Ricky's sons. When Ricky loses his driver's license, he's reduced to delivering pizza by bus or bicycle. When his life hits rock bottom, Reese returns and uses unorthodox methods such as putting a live cougar in Ricky's car to help him regain his confidence. He reminds Ricky that stock car racing originated as moonshiners having to outrun the authorities, then claims he has stashed a kilo of cocaine in Ricky's car and calls the police. He outruns the police and finds that his father has not stashed co cocaine in the car, but he's emboldened by the fact that he outran the police. The family goes to Applebee's to celebrate, but Reese causes trouble and abandons the family again. Ricky has dinner with his former assistant Susan, played by Amy Adams, who convinces him to return to NASCAR. The two develop a romantic relationship, and Ricky opts to race at Talladega Super Speedway. He calls Washington, who has started a car wash with his former pit crew, and tells them that he's racing again. Uh, before the race, Ricky meets Gerard at his house, and who admits that he came to America to lose to the superior driver so he can retire. At the Speedway, Ricky reunites with his pit crew. He couldn't get any sponsors, uh, so the hood of his car is painted with the cougar and the word me to build his own confidence. During the race, Ricky initially is in last place, but he climbs from last to second using the slingshot technique to help R Ricky pass Gerard. In the meantime, Reese goes to the ticket window where the ticket seller gives him the tickets left for him by Ricky, which he promptly scalps. Dennett orders the driver of the Wonder Bread car to take out Cal, which causes a massive wreck that eliminates everyone except Ricky and Gerard. On the last lap, Gerard rams Ricky's car, and both cars crash, ensuring that they won't finish the race. But Ricky and Gerard race on, on foot towards the finish line, and Ricky finishes first. Gerard offers Ricky a handshake, but Ricky kisses Gerard on the lips. As both drivers are disqualified for leaving their cars, Cal is deemed to be the first place the winner. Ricky reunites with Reese, and he, Susan, and his family go to Applebee's. The credits roll, and in a post credit scene, Lucy is shown reading a story to Walker and Texas Ranger. Talladega Nights, The Ballad of Ricky Bobby, is a movie which is designed to make viewers laugh, and in that regard, it can be assessed as a success. It follows the blueprint used in many of these movies starring Saturday Night Live stars and alumni. Uh, the main character essentially makes good, leading to redemption for the main character. In this case, there is a twist where the main character had it all, then lost almost everything, and can only get it back via a great struggle. But once he overcomes these obstacles, he can savor his victory. In this movie, Ricky Bobby is born, the scion of a deadbeat stock car driver and apparently a weed dealer, who is raised mostly by his mother, but because of his father, wants to go fast. So you can see where even if his father had been a doting father, it couldn't have worked out any better for him. It's, it's the fact that he, his father was a stock car driver is enough. Uh, he takes to heart his father's advice that if you ain't first, you're last. He gets a job as a pit crew member and replaces the regular driver. 
Uh, although somewhat dimwitted, he wants to win. And that's all enough to make him into a successful NASCAR driver. The movie parodies the conservative lifestyle with uh, NASCAR as a pastime, Ricky Bobby's big house, uh, multiple gas guzzling cars, a wife with big breasts, two kids named after a Chuck Norris series, and finally dinner at Applebee's. And finally, the, the idea that smart doesn't count for much. Uh, it's kind of like the attitude is, is, is more important. Uh, these are all exaggerations of the conservative lifestyle. So what better to shatter, shatter Ricky Bobby's world than the entrance of the French homosexual Jean Girard? To make matters worse, Ricky Bobby suffers a horrendous crash. It actually isn't that horrendous, but it psychologically damages Ricky. And he must overcome his fear of driving to return to being a NASCAR driver. Here, the team of Adam McKay, who is cameo as the driver Ricky Bobby replaces, Judd Apatow, and Will Ferrell as an anchorman, the legend of Ron Burgundy, create a memorable and funny comedy. There are some annoyances in this film, such as Ricky claiming he's on fire and running around in his underpants, but other than that, it's consistently funny. The acting is pretty good. Um, Will Ferrell is good as the titular character, although at this point, Will Ferrell is an acquired taste. You either like him or you don't, but if you like him, it should lead to a pretty funny movie. Uh, John C. Riley is good as the childhood friend and racing partner, uh, Cal Norton Jr. In fact, I think this is the first partnering of Will Ferrell and John C. Riley. There are others. There are Step Brothers, Anchorman 2, Tim and Eric's Billion Dollar Movie, and Holmes and Watson. Holmes and Watson, by the way, was um, a critical failure. I want to see that just to see if it's as bad as, they, as, as a lot of people said it was. Um... The rest of the cast is very good, especially Gary Cole as Reese Bobby, uh, Ricky's largely absentee father. Um, again, you, you think that Ricky wouldn't have done any better if he even was a super dad. Uh, this movie's rated PG-13 for crude and sexual humor, drug references, and brief comic violence. So there isn't any profanity or nudity in this movie, which is not quite family friendly, but it's pretty close. Um, and the movie did pretty well at the box office with box office gross of uh, $163.4 million on a budget of $72.5 million. So the team of Farrell, McKay, and Apatow did pretty well here. Uh, in conclusion, Talladega Nights is a solid movie, which essentially parodies NASCAR and Southern conservative culture. It is well written despite some tedious moments and well acted. There are some who say it's not as good as uh, Anchorman. I probably should see Anchorman to see if it's true. Uh, but for now, I give it a 7 out of 10. As for DVD extras, this one was pretty easy to summarize because there are no DVD extras on this DVD. There wasn't even chapter selection uh, or even scene selection. Just an option to play the movies. There, there are closed captions available. Um, you might as well have had the movie on VHS. I'm assuming there'd be extra space on this DVD for extras if they've been so inclined to provide uh, extras. The lack of DVD extras was, to say the least, a bit disappointing. Talladega Nights, The Battle of Ricky Bobby is a good movie and worth watching, but the DVD is a disappointment because of the lack of DVD extras. Another negative is the is that the three DVDs are stacked on top of each other. So, whereas um, the Universal 100th Anniversary Spotlight Collection had a cost of four dollars and ninety nine cents and had a DVD divider. I don't know what the industry term is, but there's they're on separate um, spindles or separate. Um, there's they're all there on separate individual spindles um but on this one they're just stacked on top of each other uh no separator separate them out so for that reason i only slightly recommend this dvd set um i intend to watch the other two dvds and if in future low budget reviews however i may amend my recommendation 
Well, that's it for this video. I'm not sure what I should do in next week's video. Uh, but I may do another DVD from the Will Ferrell 3 movie collection for the next low budget review. Like and comment on the video and subscribe so you'll be informed of the latest low budget review. As always, thanks for watching.